Lately, I've been playing with an Arduino Uno microcontroller, just like the one shown in the picture here, um, just for the fun of it. And this video is about how I set up a communication channel between this device and a Java application running on my Windows PC. Uh, now, I am in a way reinventing the wheel here because similar videos are available on YouTube. But for what it's worth, here it goes. This is what the output of my Java application looks like when I run it from the console. Basically, I open up a COM port for communication with the microcontroller. Then the microcontroller sends a text message uh, to the Java application. In return, the Java application sends to the microcontroller a current timestamp in this particular uh, format. It's called a Unix epoch time uh, format. And then on a repetitive basis, the microcontroller starts sending back the current time uh, to the Java application. That's it. Really simple. The sketch that I'm running on the Arduino, I didn't write it. It's, a, it, it's an example that came with the library that I installed. Here, let me show you which library it is. It's a library called Time by Michael Margolis. And the example is called Time Serial. This is the sketch that I'm running. So if you upload uh, this sketch to an Arduino board, uh, the output that you'll get in the serial monitor will look like this. Um, the microcontroller at this point is expecting a timestamp in the form of a text message. Uh, and the format that is used for, for this timestamp is called Unix Epoch uh, Time. The message will, will look something like this. It's a 10 digit number and for this particular sketch it has to start with the letter T. So if we send this timestamp to the Arduino board, to the Arduino microcontroller, uh, we will set uh, the clock in this manner and then the microcontroller will start sending uh, the timestamp on, on a repetitive basis to the COM port. Now let's take a look at the Java application. The library that I'm using to facilitate communication with the serial port is called jserial.com. You can include it in your project either by way of a Maven dependency dynamically, or you can uh, include the jar file itself. What I did, I included the jar file. This is the website of uh, the jserial.com library. The address is phasecast.github.io slash jserial.com. And from this website, you can either download the jar file or if you scroll down toward the bottom of the page, you will find the specifics for, for the Maven dependency. Let's run the application in IDE. The output that we get is the same as what we've seen when we ran the application from the console and also what we've seen in the Arduino editor um, serial monitor. Let's take a look at the code. Starting with the main method. JSerial.com library provides us with a data type called serial port and I instantiate an array of the serial port objects in order to get a listing of all of the available serial ports on my computer. For that purpose, I use the get com ports method. Once I do that, I select the very first 
of all of the available serial ports and I open it. The reason I do that is because on my computer I only have one serial port available and that's the serial port that I have my Arduino microcontroller hooked up to. I use the uh, input stream in order to get the first um, text string uh, from the serial port. Uh, I keep reading the input stream byte by byte until I encounter uh, uh, a line feed character, uh, ASCII code number 10. At that point, I will call a set time method, which is the constructor of the set time static class. Uh, and what this method does, uh, it puts together a, a timestamp text string and then converts uh, that timestamp uh, text string to a byte array, which can then be sent to the serial port. And here's where I, where I do that. Um, I'm not bothering with uh, any try catch uh, exception handlers because if for any reason the application crashes, I can simply restart it. Uh, so here I would pass the local time uh, to the Arduino and that will set uh, the, 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 the clock of the Arduino microcontroller to uh, the current time. From here on forward, I will use a serial port listener to receive data from Arduino. And in order to do that, I will override a serial port data listener class to uh, specify the type of event that I'm interested in. In this case, I want to know when uh, new data becomes available in the serial buffer. And when that happens, I want to read that data and store it into a new byte array. Uh, now these byte arrays will be very short snippets of data and uh, I will have them parsed by a parse byte array methods. I will take this small array of newly read uh, data and I will append it to a text string. Then I will check to see if there's a line feed character uh, in that string. And if there is, I will uh, split the string and I will cut off the uh, part of the string preceding the line feed character and I will display it. And that's it. Then I will wait for another event. Whenever new data becomes available at the serial port buffer, that'll trigger a new event and a new cycle, and that will go on indefinitely. Let's take a look at the execution one more time. Well, there it is. I hope you found this uh, video useful. Thank you.